and I can never understand the BTS army. <sighs> Jesus Christ, I'm scared for my life. I'm terrified for my life, the fact that I'm even speaking on this, okay? I feel like they're gonna find my name, my age, my address, where I live, where I go to school. Hi, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you've never seen my face before, my name is Corday. Welcome. I make a lot of different types of content, but my main focus is usually commentary. So I comment about shows and movies, make social commentary also. And I also have a couple deep dive videos, the series that I'm working on. If you'd like to see any of those, I will leave a card up above so you guys can check out anything you want to on my channel after you've watched this video. So the topic of today is parasocial relationships. And are they really inherently dangerous? Think of your favorite celebrity. They can be an influencer, an actor or actress, singer, or even YouTuber. To some certain extent, we feel connected to these people despite some of us never even meeting them. A perfect example of this is YouTube. Creators make content and subscribers gain a sense of friendship with each video. One party is growing and strengthening a relationship and getting to know the other. However, it's one-sided and not reciprocated. This is called a parasocial relationship. A parasocial interaction refers to a kind of psychological relationship experienced by an audience in their mediated encounters with performers in the mass media, particularly on television and online platforms. After reading the definition, the first thing that comes to mind are music stands. ARMY, The Barbs, The Beehive, The Arianators, The Swifties, Barty Gang. The list goes on with these stands and it's an interesting phenomenon that I am deeply interested in exploring. Part 1, BTS, K-pop, and music stands. So, ARMY. The name of the impenetrable stands that come to bat for the extremely popular Korean boy group called BTS. Like trouble breaking into your heart like that. Even while making this video, I have to be extremely careful about what I say and how I say it so as not to offend the members of the army. <laughs> These music stands will go so far to defend and protect their idols that they can and will dox, threaten, and harass people who even dare to speak a negative word against their idol. Even the fact that they call them idols, they have these things called biases, and those refer to a fan's favorite member within a group, whether because they find them attractive, or if they admire their talent, or just appreciate their overall appeal. Some K-pop fans have an ultimate bias or their favorite, not just from a group, but out of all K-pop idols. As I was doing research for this video, I looked up a bunch of articles about K-pop stands, all of these music stands, and the main two examples that I'm going to be using in this video is going to be BTS and Nicki Minaj stands. I feel like it's just wild to go on twitter and then you just have people with you know usernames and create fan pages and all this stuff for a certain celebrity or for a certain group they will be under everybody's tweet putting fan cams and it's just strange when i was looking at articles i did find an article written about certain instances that k-pop stands have been in people's most common interactions with the bts army involve their obsessive gatekeeping of how the internet talks about its members the value of its boys if we dare to speak their names namjoon hosek jimin yunji jungkook jin and taeyong knows no bounds but that overprotective doting on the band results in vicious bullying of anyone who expresses a dissenting opinion from name calling to racially charged abuse many black bts fans have shared their experiences with racism from the bts community some fans have received comments on their user pictures that black people aren't worthy to be fans of bts while another shared i've been called and word and also told to go pick cotton and it's always anonymous but they always let me know that they're armies because they always end the messages with we don't claim you an army while the internet always hosts hateful posts toxic fandoms can unite bullies under a common cause and attempt to justify the harassment of others with their love for their idols this article put it perfectly fandoms that is another sector of this whole discussion why is it that these fandoms take something and run with it and majority of these fandoms are very toxic for example we have the rick and morty fandom there's a lot of like like those people are idiots like i personally love rick and morty <laughs> i said those people are idiots um i personally love rick and morty it's a show that i have grown to even the first episode i watched i was like this is fucking hilarious i love the show however 
people take things to the extreme and if you're not a hardcore you know rick and morty fan then it's like you're not a rick and morty fan it's like so dumb and things like this are translated to celebrities the arianators the swifties the barbs they will go to bat at each other and it's this the celebrities didn't ask for any of this and it's like you're taking an image of a regular person and you're creating it to become your entire personality and i can never understand the bts army <sighs> jesus christ i'm scared for my life i'm terrified for my life the fact that i'm even speaking on this okay i feel like they're gonna find my name my age my address where i live where i go to school like but chill hi everyone um so i decided to call in the big guns to help break down this phenomenon this is you go ahead <laughs> I am Changbin's wife, yes. All right, and she also happens to be someone related to me. She happens to be my sister, blood sister. So this connection is different. You know, you have someone here like me who has no idea anything about this K-pop stuff, who finds it really hard to wrap my head around. And then you have someone like her who's very deep in this world. I, as a host, should have prepared some questions and I did not. So this is kind of gonna be like off the dome, you know what I mean, like a little off the dome and we're gonna go back and forth and um, we're just gonna try and understand each other's mindset. So explain to me the appeal of K-pop and what do you like the most about it? Wow, what a great question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you know, like when I was 14, I said I would never get into K-pop. Like I literally vehemently yeah, said say I would never get into K-pop. I can Because I she saw didn't. what mm -hmm. it was for other people. I think what, what I really like about it is just like these perfect people who are great at dancing and singing and doing all these things. And then when you get to watch like their vlogs or get to watch their lives, it's like, you get to see more of their private life and see more of like how they are on a regular day-to-day -day basis and it feels like closer relationship to them and so whenever they they are laughing together as a group mm -hmm. you're laughing it, with them you're like right there with them it's like you're, I'm right, there you're right there with them, with them. Exactly. especially now i just re like it's always so weird for me because i was honestly obsessed with k-pop for such a long amount like for such a long stretch of time until i got into college and then i kind of like cooled off of it and then it's like i'll go months or like a year without watching anything and then i'm back into it again because yeah. it's, it's very addictive it it's is. very strange so i'm back in the cycle again like when you get into k-pop what really draws you in is the personality of each member and what is so interesting about it is like compared to western media where you have like one person that you're like who do you like a lot to listen to i couldn't it? tell you let's just say the weekend but i'm not like a i knew you were gonna <laughs> say the weekend i not i never look look in deep into people that i, I just, exactly yeah you and i'm the same way like in there are very few individual artists individual western artists that i'm like oh my gosh i'm obsessed with them i want to know everything about them but with k-pop for some reason just the way the entire entertainment and entertainment industry is set up as far as like the groups they want you and i'm saying they is in the overarching they the entertainment companies mm -hmm. want their audience and the fans to be obsessed i mean with it makes number. sense it generates money it keeps them in the in the news mm -hmm. it keeps like it's their money maker okay so then that leads me to this with the way that, you know, these K-pop idols and the hype around them, that is what generates money for these big companies. What do you have to say about the overworking of these K-pop artists and the fact that a lot of them are mentally unhappy? I read something where like one of the idols committed suicide. So, and it's something that actually happens quite often with the bands because they're, I know I'm, people are passing out on stage, performing. The more um, they keep supporting it, the more the companies are like, okay, people like this and they're gonna keep overworking them to continue to create music and all this stuff for these fans. So what's your view on that? I think it's very, very sad and it's very disheartening because you, there's that comparison between Western musicians versus, you know, in the K-pop group. It's like Western musicians, their time is their time. They get to make music almost when they want to. Of course, like the label is gonna be like, we need music, blah, yeah. blah, blah. But they have help with the songwriting, they have help with, with like all of that. And so their pressure is reduced compared yeah. to that, the K-pop idols where it's like, literally from the time that they're like 14, 15, they're already 
auditioning for these huge companies. I was 16. And then I went and auditioned, and then they called me, and they were like, can you fly to Korea within two months? God knows we were And then my whole life changed. Practicing dances, dance routines for who knows how many hours per week. And not only that, but they're living together with these people that are supposed to be in their group. They're li living in conditions that are honestly a little bit subpar. Even with the biggest comparison that we have to boy groups, we have One Direction. Aside from like Backstreet Boys and maybe NSYNC from the 90s, they're the only big huge comparison we can see is between one direction and like any other k-pop group from south korea yeah and the thing is that with one direction they still had their own time you know they were able to make music almost when they wanted to it wasn't see, that but that's where i'm gonna disagree i think when it comes to the whole groups as a whole there this is where it goes into like the, the commoditization of music one Direction, they couldn't breathe. Like that's why yes. Zayn and all those people left the band early. They, they weren't even in it for that long, yeah. but it felt like they were there for so long. And it's because yeah. girls got a hold of it. Like yeah. they didn't get a the break. Zayn literally, I think he had expressed later that he didn't want to have any of those experiences. And mm. you know, he was founded. All of them were just put together in a group by America's yeah. Got Talent. Yes. Yeah. So it was like they didn't even ask to be a band. They didn't mm. ask, but they were just trying to individually find their own passions or whatever and then it ends up blowing into something huger I'm you're right so that's very true yeah and i do think like going back to the whole k-pop group thing their situation is not good and it makes me very like that's the dark side that you don't want to think about there are a lot it's actually insane how many how much suicide there yeah. is in in like the music industry in South Korea. Also, the members are kind of competing against each other. Of course, they're gonna be more people that are more popular. Like if you look at One Direction, the most popular one was Harry Styles. So the competition within each members, the way that yeah. they have to put their asses off to debut. To get right back to the premise of the video, which has to, which is about parasocial relationships. And I wanna be able to make parallels with this and you know, the Mitski situation and the barbs and all that stuff because it's mm. not just K-pop fans that are crazy. You have Barb's, no, the Beehive, Aryanators, all of those people who like go and stand culture basically. They're standing yeah. a person. It's a parasocial relationship, and to me, mm. it's like it's like it walks the thin line of healthy and unhealthy because people will take idols and celebrities and be like, "That's my husband." I'm this person's wife, for example, you're saying, Bob, well, you're this person's <laughs> wife. I'm yeah. like, this is, I'm going, like, they, some people genuinely believe that at some point they're going to marry this person, they're going to see this person, they're going to have a personal relationship with this person, and that they are their husband. A lot of the times, that's in my mind where it crosses the line of unhealthy, where you're now saying that this person means so much to you that they now take a role of a partner, a life partner, a romantic relationship. You know what I mean? So that's where I'm like iffy because when you enjoy mm. something, you can enjoy something without allowing it to corrode or like enter your personal life and how you um, view things. And majority of the reasons why people depend on these parasocial relationships or like get so deeply into it because like you said, sometimes like you'll spend hours and hours watching stuff hours people are focusing on these relationships and it's strengthening those relationships and they're not able to focus on real relationships with other people they're not going out they don't have a lot of other like people to have like sturdy relationships with and instead they're feeding all of their time and energy into this parasocial relationship but it's one-sided and you're not going to get any reciprocation from that so you're constantly like you know taking and taking and taking but you're not getting anything from it that's why i was like saying jokingly like oh i'm watching k-pop again so my life is like clearly not going well <laughs> or something like that <laughs> no for real like no listen there's no, that one time way back when years ago when i went to sleep and i woke <laughs> up and you were still watching K-pop? You said, I didn't sleep all night. It's but sometimes like- When I'm telling you like, okay, I'm on spring break right now in college, but since like the 11th of March, every day I've been watching K-pop. Like the Stray Kids that I'm talking about, this new group, 
they've been making content since 2017. I'm all cut out. I've watched almost everything on their YouTube channel. So I like I completely agree with you. I do think that parasocial relationships are hugely dangerous, not only for the consumer, mm -hmm. but for the person who is being consumed because yeah. they're no longer a human. They're, they're no not. longer someone who can make mistakes. They're, they're an no idol. Longer... <laughs> exactly. They are meant for, and that's why I said also that it's the overarching company that is at fault, not really the members itself the issue with parasocial relationships and why they can be so dangerous for the uh, members itself is because like i don't know if you've ever heard this but in like south korea I, like a scandal would be like if an idol is dating someone or has been like spotted or rumored to be dating someone and that can like severely damage someone's career no i'm sure that their fans their fans no, would like go out like, and probably like hurt somebody especially the person they're they dating have. say that they're all straight and they all want to like get married and have kids or whatever they're getting to that age to where like that's something that they eventually will need to consider and eventually will do and it's like when does the tie end even when i'm saying like oh i'm tangvin's wife or like i'm blah 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 and i i feel very like I feel in a heightened obsessive state. Mm -hmm. I'm still cognitively aware that this is not reality. And this is not this is not a relationship that I'm feeding into that is beneficial for me in the long term. Exactly. I really like appreciate your honesty in this conversation because it's something that that I've noticed that's very strange to me. And that's why <laughs> I was like, I'm never I watched it like for this video, I've watched a few clips of them and I was like, oh, I can see they're very likable. So I can see how very, people will like mm -hmm. them. Seeing how it's affected people and also the like the parasocial relationship part of it. I just know that it's not really something I I want to get into because then it's like, how do you get out and where is the end of this? I want to thank you for talking to me. I feel like it was important to get your side of it because I don't want to just give my opinion on things and the BTS army will like slit my neck in my sleep <laughs> saying that I did not know the full story. Yeah. So it's better if they hear it from a I fan did. themselves. You know, I hope you have a great night. You, whether that is consuming more K-pop content it or- is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wishing you the best. Love, light, everybody subscribe to her. I'll leave her link down in the description box. So check it out and have a good night, Dinsey. I love you. Bye! One term you may hear me say often in this video is a sasang fan. A sasang fan is an obsessive fan who stalks or engages in other behavior constituting an invasion of the privacy of celebrities, specifically Korean idols, drama actors, or public figures. Some examples of like extreme cases, for one, members of the army will leak information people aren't supposed to know. Sasang, I'm sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, fan leaked BTS's music video shooting schedule that was a secret at the time. The fan gave out their schedule via a Facebook post and notified literally everyone where the boys were about to shoot their video and at that time. The same goes for the flight schedule too. This is the reason BTS had to stop flying commercial. Imagine a group of fans tracking your whereabouts so much so that they're able to locate where you are, what flight you're gonna be on, and share that information, it's dangerous and it's scary. Talking about not flying commercial, BTS once had to encounter a ghostly fight where all passengers were in hoodies and a mask. Once the plane landed, they left their luggage and ran out to catch up with them. They also break into hotel rooms. A group of Sasang fans found out where BTS were staying and showed up behind them in their hotel room while they were filming themselves. They also happened to mob them at the airport Airports are the easiest places for fans to get closer to BTS members. A lot of the time, they've even dragged, touched, and pushed them without their consent. Even though they have security with them every time, it does not seem to be enough. Simply just searching up, why are K-pop fans so obsessive, yields this answer from a Quora post. They say, most of K-pop fans are obsessed because we felt a strong connection slash strongly felt relatable to the idol. Hence, we develop a sense of belonging to the idol. All of these are examples of extreme behaviors of people who are deeply embedded in their parasocial relationship with BTS. It's to the point where you don't know where one starts and where it ends. And the same goes for the Barb's Nicki Minaj's stand group. 
they will stand behind Nicki Minaj 10 toes down regardless of the circumstance or the situation and you most definitely do not want to be on the receiving end of their attack because they get grimy okay I stumbled upon this article titled the five times the barbs went barbaric for Nicki Minaj written by Kira Knight and I will link all articles used in this video in the description box down below there was a time in 2018 where Nicki Minaj wanted to have a low profile and she just left social media for a while and she kept her public appearances practically to zero and this included the Grammys so you weren't seeing her um, later on we find out that she was working on her studio album Queen but at this time nobody knew where she was but the the barbs began to get so frantic about her absence that they launched a campaign to find her. They started to question her whereabouts and even created a website called Finding Nikki, which included a countdown to the very minute Nikki went missing from social media. This behavior just plain and simply is not normal and it's deeply concerning. There are many more instances in which different music stand groups have gone over the edge and crossed several lines. And if I were to try and get into all of them, we would be here forever because there's so many different fandoms and groups and stand groups, it's, it's wild. Part two, YouTubers, Twitter, and overfamiliar playful rudeness. Overfamiliar playful rudeness. This can be seen all the time on Twitter. Several popular creators have tweeted about their distaste for playful rudeness from strangers. There's a sort of relationship and bond created when you've seen someone grow on a platform from like the very roots, right? You feel aligned with this person in a way and you're like, yeah, I knew them before anyone else did. So basically my relationship with this person is closer than you. When really it isn't. This person does not know who you are. The creator does not know who you are. People feel like they can, you know, get on the internet and just say anything about these creators because they feel like they're friends and it creates an unbalanced relationship. This leads me to the situation with Mitski, a popular alternative indie artist, and she prompted the creation of this video. Recently, she tweeted out that she preferred not to see phones out during the entirety of the performances and people called her ableist and someone responded condescendingly saying, bestie. That's great and all, but some of us have mental health issues that cause association and film to remember the moment. I'm not looking at my phone the entire time just to press record on. Don't even get me started on the use of bestie, queen, sis. Nine times out of 10 when someone uses that, they're using it condescendingly. They're using it to condescend you. Fans feel entitled to people that they've never even met. This issue runs so deep, it runs deeper. There are subreddits and stan accounts and fan pages for these people and it's just so eerie to witness the commoditization of music and the idolization of people because at the very end of the day, these are regular people just like you and I. But because they hold a specific talent or they're putting themselves out there on social media, people feel like they have access to them, unlimited access to them. Part three leads me to the dangers of parasocial relationships. What do these parasocial relationships mean and are they inherently dangerous? It's the prompt of the video. I personally feel like parasocial relationships can be healthy to a certain extent. This conversation is a lot more nuanced and it's just not black and white. Currently, these relationships, parasocial relationships, just really aren't avoidable, especially in the day and age that we're in right now but they also shouldn't be feared. It can be healthy within certain boundaries. For example, I'm talking to you. You may or may not be a subscriber, but you're seeing me and you're gaining some sort of information from this conversation. I, on the other hand, am recording this looking at a camera. I'm just speaking into the void. You know, I don't get to interact with you. I don't get to see your face. I don't get to see your reactions to this. We're not having a back and forth conversation unless I go to the comment section and I decide to, you know, interact with people. However, there isn't that back and forth. There isn't a give and take of this relationship. Unfortunately, if there was a way to do that, that would be awesome. I'm sure so many creators would do that. There is nothing wrong with enjoying content or content creators enjoying music, enjoying artists much more. But when it takes a turn into obsession, 
treating this person as if you have a personal relationship with them or when you get deeply offended by those with opposing opinions on this person that's when you know you need to go and seek help okay so how can you fix this if you find yourself deeply entwined in a parasocial relationship unplug get off twitter log out of reddit delete instagram go outside and touch some grass okay breathe in the fresh air connecting to oneself and reality will help shake that unhealthy and dependent relationship with strangers a lot of these people that rely so heavily on these parasocial relationships lack genuine relationships in real life and i know it's not always so easy to be like just go out and make friends i know firsthand it's not easy but it makes it even harder when you're isolating yourself and dedicating all of your time and energy into a person who's never met you i personally have never gone through a stan phase or an obsessive phase over musicians and artists because i just feel like it's idolization and i never want to put someone on a pedestal the only person that's on a pedestal is myself and God, you know, like he and I, you know, that's the, those are the only two people that matter and matter the most to me. You know, there are YouTube creators that I love and I look at almost as like an older sister or an older brother or someone who gives me great advice or channels that I just genuinely love. And there are people whose personalities just come out so vibrantly through the camera through youtube that it feels like we're literally having a conversation or we're on facetime or something and that's awesome those people are gifted but i never let it cross that line admiration is fine adoration is fine infatuation is dangerous and that is at the very core of these unhealthy parasocial relationships if you enjoyed this video i trust that you will leave me a like and comment down below go ahead and subscribe if you like this type of content and if you'd like to see more i would love to know any type of content that you're interested in me talking about leave them all down below i will see you all later and take care